that I had an amazing success story. The firm is called Carlisle Pearing in Australia. Every week I've been doing sessions with them via Skype with either their whole team or meeting in small groups or sometimes just with the principals of the firm. I've got to know these guys really well. One of the recruiters in a session I did yesterday, her name is Belinda, she made eight placements in first quarter. In three months, she made eight sizable high-level placements, which is amazing for any recruiter to be able to do that at that level. Just an amazing feat. And I told her, I said, I'm really proud of you. I said, let me ask you, what was it that helped you make these placements? She said, well, it was two things. Number one, it's the consistent training that we get from our office, which means that one of their core values is development, is training their people. They're committed to that. Secondly, she said, it was some of the things that I learned from you. And I was really humbled by that. And I was curious what she meant by that. And I think a lot of it had to do with certain key concepts. You see, most trainers, they focus on step number one, step number two, step number three. I like to look at it a little bit differently. What are those principles and premises that govern success? Let's master those because we can solve any problem in our business when we really have a thorough understanding of about four or five key concepts. And they're malleable. They fit any scenario, any situation. A lot of it has to do with principles of ethical influence, personal development, resilience, things like that. I think the biggest reason why most recruiters don't have that level of success that Belinda had is because they're putting limitations on what they're doing. There's some sort of a limiting belief that's going on in their mind that's keeping them from achieving their full potential. What's the level at which you stop getting paid as a recruiter? What's the limit at which your manager stops paying you commissions? Oh, you're telling me there is no limit. So he's, who's keeping you from achieving your full potential? Well, you and I both know the answer. We limit ourselves. Recruiting and golf are very similar. Golf is 90% mental, and the other 10% is mental. It's all going on in your head. I've coached a lot of recruiters one-on-one, -on -one, and most of the recruiters that I coach are people that have at least two or three years in the business, some of them 20, 30 years in the business. And the, the problems that we have are very similar. We have to identify what those limiting beliefs are and come up with an actionable plan to overcome that. That's what I try to do when I coach people. How can we get to thinking at a high level? I think the biggest problem that recruiters have in our business is low self-esteem. They don't think enough of themselves. They attach a certain billing amount and that becomes their self-identity, their self-concept of who they are. And if there's ever a hiccup in the economy, and their billing goes down, well, now they're on a negative self-esteem spiral. And they're never going to be able to pull out of that unless they change the way they think. I really believe this, that recruiting is a personal development opportunity disguised as a job. That any sort, uh, excuse me, Bitta, this is my cat that tries to steal the attention. Where was I? Oh, yeah, self-esteem and self-confidence. What's the difference? Self-esteem, think of it like this. Your mom says, I love you no matter what. You have value regardless of what's going on in your world. Self-confidence, your dad says, I'm proud of you for achieving that. And our business, we need both. When I coach people, any sort of problem, any sort of reason why they're not successful can always be traced back to a character issue. So how can we overcome this deficit? By changing how we think. We need to learn how to think at a higher level. How do we do this? Well, there's two ways. One of them is you can do the Vulcan mind meld, just like Spock in the movie or in the television series of Star Trek. We can find people that we want to, we want to get their knowledge. We can, we can suck it out of their head by using the Vulcan mind meld method. Well, you can't do that. That's science fiction, so we have to do it the old-fashioned way, and that's by reading books. Now, this is a book I'm reading right now called Thrive by Alan Weiss. Alan used to be my coach. He used to be my mentor. And I've read probably about six or seven of his books. His website is summitconsulting.com. Come on, get off. His website is summitconsulting.com. I'd recommend you get this book. I'm just starting this. And what I recommend you do is read at least two pages every day. Create a daily habit, a daily discipline of reading. I keep books throughout the house. I don't sit and read volumes and volumes for hours at a time. I'll read when I have time. So I want to I change the way I think using my non-productive time and making it productive. Another book I'd recommend... Is a book by Pat Pearson called Stop Self-Sabotage. It tells you how to keep from killing your deals, from tanking your deals. I read this book several times. I'm doing a webinar on this topic called How to Stop Self-Sabotage. 
on Wednesday, April 6 at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. If you're interested, click on the link below. It's $77 per site. If you're a solo practitioner, you get a $20 discount. If you're a member of the coaching club, those are included in your membership. Uh, for more information on that, click on the link at the top that says coaching club. Thanks for watching this. My name's Scott Love. Have a great day and get back on the phone.